Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Web of Light. I'm Dr. Kevin and I'm here with my lovely co-hostess, Anji Dianju. Hello, Miss Anji. Hello. Angie. How are you? <laughs> We're doing fine. Good, good. Uh, First of all, we want to welcome any and all new viewers. I know that we're picking up viewers on a weekly basis. If you are new to Web of Light, please let us know. Send an email and let us know that you are now getting Web of Light uh, at your local public access channel, or maybe you're watching it on our YouTube channel. I know that we have uh, people, public access channels that are carrying us from Maine to California, and we don't always get notified. So we would love to welcome you to the Web of Light family. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, the Web of Light is about celebrating, supporting, promoting people who are weaving a web of light in the community, in the world, in other people's lives, uh, on any variety of different ways. So again, welcome to Web of Light. So Ms. Angie, we have, mm -hmm. we've, I think we've ended up, I, I'm not sure how this happened, but I think we ended up in the event business, didn't we? Yeah, we did. How it's did your, it happen? It's your fault. <laughs> It's all her fault. Yeah, it's all my fault. Every time we get busy, it's all my fault. Ah, well, yeah. you know, hey. <laughs> Got to blame somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as many of you know, we had the Earth Day Web of Light uh, Expo in Nashua, uh, where we, uh, you know, we had said we were going to have 1,000 to 1,500 people that we thought would come in through the weekend. We came in at 993. So cool. where were you seven other people? I want excuses from your doctors why you didn't show up. <laughs> um, have your mummy write, write you a note why you didn't come. Uh, and then we have, uh, well, you have another web of light, uh, September, September 30th. 30th, October 1st. In Portsmouth, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Yeah, this time on Portsmouth. So if you need a chance to see April, come on down to Portsmouth. And if, or if you're from that community and decide you're going to wait for that, then... Come and join us. You know, most of the events we put on, Dr. Kevin, are for the community. Yeah. I know it's like to enlighten them, to give them a good time, uh, some enjoyment, some relaxation. So, you know, we come on down, check it out. You know, and it's a safe, it's a safe environment. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things is many people are out there are seekers these days. And they are looking for uh, alternative pathways to spirit, alternative pathways to good health, al alternative pathways to even healing, communication, um, how to have better relationships, that a lot of the old paradigms have shifted. And, and what we once upon a time thought was solid foundation has actually become quicksand. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the other things I want to describe with people is the fact that we're not all about like you're not going to come to this and find um you know people worshiping stones or anything like that it's mostly people who are looking at positive ways to influence others looking for ways of getting people out of the negative attitudes that surround us so much in this lifetime at this time well, and there's nothing wrong with people who worship stones. And I mean, and in the <laughs> April Expo, we had people that were selling crystals. They weren't worshiping them, but no. they were selling them because they can have healing properties emotionally, physically. You know, there's a lot of stuff about stones. And we had somebody there that was, you know, selling cannabis as, a, as a CBDs, 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 which are non-THC based that, that are having miraculous, really, some phenomenal. We had phenomenal Jim Keen on our results, show. Yeah. Um, I just read a recent post from him. Um, his mother, I think, has now gone off all of her medications. All of her meds now are almost, I think there's just a trace of them left. And she is washing the dishes and she's talking to people and she's remembering. This woman was in Alzheimer's. Yes. And she was barely functioning. Last, and they had an awesome Last system. November, they had her in, a, in an actual Alzheimer's unit. And, and through the help <laughs> of all natural solutions, in the form of CBDs. She's home now with him. She's home now with him. She's remembering things. She's functioning on her own. She's doing very well. Um, she's actually, she's doing some reading as well. Yeah. So things that. It's just incredible to see that. Absolutely. So yeah, the Web of Light Expo is on about people uh, 
you know, worshiping stones, but there are people who are, who are selling stones and people who are showing you non-stoned ways to use naturals to get healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're the one. <laughs> you used it. <laughs> you used the example. I just went with it. <laughs> um, one of the things we pride ourselves here on Web of Light is highlighting and promoting and supporting people who are speaking out, who are making a difference, who are making change in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you want to sit around and complain that the world is changing and you don't like it, keep it to yourself. I'm not interested in listening. If you find something you don't like and you are complaining while you're doing something about it to inspire and motivate other people, well, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to speak out, you got to be heard, you got to make change. And almost 30 years ago, um, one of our local towns in the area, Pepperell, Mass., uh, and I may get this story wrong, and she can correct me. She has permission. This is the story as I remember it, but we all know about me. And yes memory. Sometimes I, I, I slide to the side a little. Um, but I believe that the local town decided it could no longer afford fireworks. They had taken it out of their budget. And this woman said, my children and my grandchildren are going to have the same experiences that I had growing up as a child. And she started a nonprofit mm -hmm. called Small Town Big Bang, um, where she for now almost 30 years has been raising the money every year so that the kids can have Fourth of July fireworks. Now, this is a hero or that's, heroine. That's not me. It was my mother and her friends. We Your mother and picked your friends? Up. Yeah. Okay. We picked up. And I'm introducing... And other people have along the way, too. Here. I'm introducing Kathy Lundy. Mm -hmm. Kathy is actually... Uh, you work professionally as a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, but so, so did you find it? Your, your mother found it then? Her and her four friends. Okay. decided it was time to have the town honor patriotism, honor America. You know, patriotism was kind of waning back then, so they sat around the kitchen table and got it off the ground, and it's really been booming and banging for 30 years since then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got back into it this year. We've been, you know, on and off, but this year me and my family are, you know, just trying to help it along. Mm -hmm. help We're the party people of Pepperell. Nonprofit party people. <laughs> the nonprofit party the non people. Nonprofit yep. party people. <laughs> wow. Well, the patriotism. Patriotism. Okay. Yeah. So well, that's true. It's it's the uh, nonprofit party people. Um, I mean, you see, nonprofit. That doesn't stop them from getting Seagrams or any of the other parties, party party drinks <laughs> no. to sponsor it. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> no. No. So, um, you. You've been doing these events, and you said that this nonprofit's been been doing fireworks, uh, been raising money for fireworks for almost 30 years. 30 years ago, so still, in my eyes, you're 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 preserving a way of life, mm -hmm. and you're out there making a difference in the world, yeah. not just whining about it. Oh, remember when? You're like, no, no. When is now? Now is next. What are you going to do? Come on, help me. Fork it over. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. It's maintaining a tradition, a community. The community comes together on that day and they celebrate America. Yeah. We are changing it up, though. That's how. That's why I'm here with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, yep. That's the change part. That's We're the adding part that to I'm going to talk about a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because um, a few years back, people who are from this area may remember uh, Amethyst, um, it, there was Amethyst Wildfire. Um, now her name is Emerald. But at that time, she had a spot down on uh, East Pearl Street. And she created this beautiful artsy function called Firefest. And she ran it in Nashua. And she opened the streets of Nashua, and she had all the streets come alive near the East Pearl Street junction of Main Street and all the way up, probably about a block or two up. Uh, we had all kinds of entertainers there. Uh, the people came and, and enjoyed themselves. It was a tribute to the arts, and it was called Firefest. And um, we stopped doing it a few years later. I had helped her out with this. And we always had an enjoyable time doing it, but we put it to rest. 
um, and we were holding it for some day, it would be a nonprofit that may be able to utilize it to its fullest extent. And this past year when I was introduced to Small Town Big Bang and, um, you know, pieces came together and all of a sudden Kathy had shown us this field and, and I said, well, I think that you just took over Firefest. <laughs> so with Amethyst's blessing, um, this is going on to be recreated uh, at Arts and Entertainment, beautiful day, July 1st, prior to the 4th of July which is very fitting, <laughs> of course. And, uh, you know, it may even envelop into another fire fest near the, uh, you know, who knows, fire safety week, which is yeah. how it yep. started. But um, we're glad to be, I'm glad that it stayed because they've taken 30 years of their time keeping this going. And I think fire fest is going to be really welcome in that town. And for those of you who don't know, my big contribution was I was born on the 4th of July. Right. So, hey, you know. That's right. It was all meant to be, if you think about it. It was all meant to be. Well, and how perfect to have a 4th of July celebration called Firefest. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yep. And the, uh, there is nothing that's any more American than the celebration of the arts. The arts. Yep. I mean, from, from our inception, we mm -hmm. have always been a country that has, in various ways, promoted and supported the arts mm -hmm. and all of the different things that are going yeah. on in the arts and the things that are happening. Um, I love the fact that this was um, a group of people um, and who decided to, to step up and make a, a difference. And they weren't politicians. No, not at all. They weren't nope. wealthy business owners. Nope. They weren't trying to push some agenda. They just said, we need to do this. We yep. want to keep it growing, yeah. Yep. Now, um, your mother, is your mother still with us? Nope. Okay. No, nope. nope. she died. But not, she started it, and all through the years, there have been a lot of people who have come on the committee and have made it, you know, last. Mm -hmm. So it's been obviously a community effort for like 30 years. Different people along the way have stepped up and made it happen. And by doing that, you've, you know, you've, your mother may have started it, but she brought the community into that. Yep. We're going to do something rather than yeah. just sit back and And, and no one wants to see it, it end. It's a yeah. great thing. So yeah. friends, family, community. How often, and I'm, it's going to sound like a wild question probably, but how so. many of the people, how many of the committee members and how many of the people that have kept through through the years, have they been more male or female? Maybe more. I'm going to say it might be a tie, but maybe more female a little bit. More female. Because you said your mother and four of her friends. Three women and a man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's um, something nurturing about it that makes me think feminine <laughs> energy. Not that it yeah. has to be, but you know, I know there's the patriotic side, but there's something nurturing about this. They were very committed to keeping patriotism and the Fourth of July alive in the, you know, fireworks and community and that sort of thing, and it's really held true yeah. for 30 years. How much support does the community, the town of Pepperell, give you for this? The town way back gave some, but um, nothing recently because of the budget. I do want to say, though, they did offer this year some, you know, some sort of money. But I had a really hard time accepting it because I kind of think it should be a community donation, not attached to anyone's taxes. I did tell the town administrator if I was out in that audience and that they came to me to support fireworks, after listening to what safety needs, what the school needs, I would have a hard time voting yes for that. So we're kind of keeping mm -hmm. it donation-based. Let people donate if they want, come to the thing if they can afford it, donate if they can't, then just come and enjoy. Mm -hmm. So they did offer. They, interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Very interesting, and I, I really respect that. Not everyone agrees with me. Well, no one's ever, not, not everyone's always going to agree with you. But what I would do is that if there is, you know, you could also go back and say to the town, um, you know, don't, i.e., raise special money for us or ask for us, but, you know, we're, we're, we're open to take any in-kind services you want to provide that help us support it. Yeah, the police, the fire department, they're there. We do, mm -hmm. we do have a budget to pay them, but it's, you know, it's reasonable and it's fair. Okay. I mean, they like to get paid yeah. too, so, yeah. you know, yeah. yep. Yeah. Well, again, you know, um, there, I'm sure there are things that the town can provide other than money that supports it, like they're, it's going to be at the? Town field, town so they fields. donate that. You know, yeah. we'll use some electricity, we'll need some water for some things that we're doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, everyone kind of helps out. Yeah. They now, have to put the banners up. Yeah. Now, this isn't just for the town of Pepperell. Other nope. people anywhere from any yep. area can come in yep. and join in the fun. Yeah. People yeah. from all over come. Yeah. 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 We're it's going to... Um, now, I know we have... Uh, I've, we've been communicating with you because I want to start having some of the artists and people like the face painters and stuff like yep. that. I want mm -hmm. to have them on my Dragon's Unicorn and other creative creature nice. shows. I did um, let them know, and they're pretty agreeable. Okay. Good. None yeah. have contacted me yet, but um, hopefully... I probably told them you'd contact them, but I can get back to them. Okay. They may have. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will try to look through there and, and see. Um, but so I know that Angie has a, a, a vision that she's drawing on from the event. Mm -hmm. You had a vision, so I'm going to let both of you ladies share the different visions of what this fire fest is going to be like and then i'm going to hop right in the middle whenever i want so okay, okay. how are you visioning this angie the fire fest that uh, they take over they need to make it for their community however my envisionment is to keep it open to the arts and when we talk arts a lot of people you know as soon as you say the word art they think of paintings and you know different artwork of that nature and and in reality, our United States is filled with all types of arts. So there's arts of uh, actual creativity, there's the musical arts, there's the entertainment arts, there's theatrical, there's dance. Um, you, you know, you name it, you just, mm -hmm. you're just going to keep moving along and moving along. There's more and more. So even holistic arts, you know, sound healing therapies, drumming circles. Also, with the regular arts, there's um, acoustic guitarist, um, even if there was somebody that had a little keyboard that they loved playing, those types of things. Bands uh, that are actual uh, amateur bands that are really wanting to show the public how much they can mm -hmm. have fun with them. Um, and then of course you have your other parts, uh, maybe belly dancers or <laughs> or um, jugglers or clowns and you know face painters like we spoke of all of that is all should all be included so that it's very festive and also again uh, will the i feel there'll be booths filled with artists that create perhaps jewelry uh, woodwork um tinctured oils it's not mine tinctured oils <laughs> He's uh -oh. beat me now. i am gonna beat her <laughs> <laughs> I turned mine down. Yeah. So anyways, moving right along. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so it's kind of the same vision. Because art, even the food, we have bands, we have guitarists, we have a karate man who's going to come and demonstrate his art. Yep. I've contacted some dance studios. Um, but I think our vision's probably the same. Jewelry, you know, that whole concept of art, music. I talked to a... Um, um, a uh, henna tattooist that does both temporary and permanent hand-drawn mm -hmm. tattoos that I think is planning yep. on coming. Yeah, it's art. But I think our vision might be the same. And basically, we started out knowing each other with mystical madness. So yes. my envision of this is probably Fourth of July madness when I think yeah. of the field, <laughs> probably kind of the same way yeah. you do. Yeah. A lot of activity, yeah. a lot of things going on. Yeah. 
American through yeah. you know yeah. culture, how we live, what mm -hmm. we. Eat. I mean, you know, as it as it progresses, we um, honestly with Firefest, we were starting to open it up to like they had a an hour and a half of um, chefs coming in and competing, yeah, or right. people having uh, who makes the best pie. Yeah, that's those types yeah. of things. So you know, there's so much that you can do mm -hmm. with this. So this year we're looking at the fact that we're going to have three stages. Um, we're going to do now. We're going to be doing the band stage actually in the big town field because we can't get electricity in the soccer field. Is that correct? As far as I know, I have to meet with um, that person. Okay. Shortly, but she did say there's electricity. She had wired it everywhere. So the electrician will be checking that out. Oh, good. So good. that's. So, so she did tell me there's electricity. Good. So we're going to have bands but, playing, and we're yep. reaching out for, for bands. And, of course, all of this is going to take some scheduling and things like this mm -hmm. of making sure we have a wide variety mm -hmm. of and get time slots for people. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to have a performance art stage. Uh, we had somebody, uh, actually, my co-host for Dragons, Unicorns, and uh, other creative creatures, um, her son is uh, part of the Peacock, I think she said the Peacock? Peacock Players. Peacock Players, because he's yeah. going to be going oh, to a summer mm -hmm. camp, children's camp. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, contact him and see if they would like to do a skit or a performance mm -hmm. on one of the stages at some point that day to, to promote They promote actually arts did at the original fireplace, Firefest. The, the original fireplace? Fireplace, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fireplace, the place yeah. where I'm going to put your phone and burn it. <laughs> So, so far committed is Three Times Fast, which is a band. We've had them in the past, actually. They were at, in mm -hmm. October. Yeah. And two acoustic guitarists, Sean Coleman and Jeff Mrozak, yep. which I sent you. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting to hear about some singers and possibly another band. Nice. Yep. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm going to say to the community, if you know somebody that is interested in bringing their arts, their crafts, their musical talents, um, even poetry. They're a poet and they want to mm -hmm. speak some poetry. Um, anyone, maybe a little dance studio that wants to have their students come out and perform a little dance, belly dancers, connect with us. Yeah. Because we'll, we still have spaces to fill and we'd love to see you be a part of this festival no matter where you come from. How many um, now you have done other things on the 4th of July for Big Bang before on, on this weekend. How many people usually show up at something like this? What's been the... So, over 3,000. It's been counted. Okay. So... This is, a, this is a little different, starting a little bit earlier, but with the chicken barbecue and other things, you know, it mm -hmm. should... Kind yeah. of last all day. So the, it's going to start with the 4th of July parade, which is mm -hmm. on the 1st. Mm -hmm. And then the parade will basically end at the field. Well, the parade ends at the VFW. Then we go back, go back bus them back to the field. So it starts They're at going. the field. OK, and goes to the VFW. Yep. And what time does the parade get over? About 1.30, 2 o'clock, sometimes 2.30, depending on how you know, long it is, how big it is. Okay. And what time does it start? After the parade, like the chicken, oh, in the morning? Yeah, what time does the parade start? 12.30. Okay. Because we've been basically telling vendors to set a time as around noon so they're there. Mm-hmm. Because people aren't, aren't going to follow the parade. I mean, people mm -hmm. stand by a parade right. and it kind of right. goes by. Yep. And as the parade's going by, yep. they'll then start going into the mm -hmm. fields. And what time are the fireworks that night? Dusk. Which will probably be around 8.30. 8.30, 9 o'clock. 9 yep. o'clock. Yeah, so we've been telling people more or less that the, the field will have stuff going on starting at noon, mm -hmm. noon to eight. Yep. So it's the mid part of the day. Yep. Um, some of it's going to be tented. You've got some tents for us, right? I'm working on it. You're working on it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I've got your helium. You and got me. Yeah, I saw the helium. And <laughs> what <laughs> else? <laughs> Cable guy and DJ to keep it going. What else? Okay. The tents. I'm working on it. She's working on the tents, okay. But you got a climbing wall. Yep. And uh, we have a face, face painter. Painter. Dunk tank. What? Dunk, Dunk tank. tank, little bit of cornhole. 
Yeah. Food trucks, chicken barbecue. Yeah. And I do think I'm going to have you uh, see if all of the artists can connect us, uh, connect with us, so we can schedule the timings that they're going to be on, and then see about scheduling the time for them to be on our show. Some of the people will be on mm -hmm. the Web of Light show. Okay. We'll probably pick yes. up a couple people to be on the Web of Light show that are going to be there, um, and then. Um, uh, I actually taped a show earlier today for Dragons with a uh, uh, lovely woman who does watercolor, very whimsical water watercolors. And her husband is a massage therapist, and the, sometimes they will share a booth. And so I think they're planning on coming. That's good. So people can get a little chair massage mm -hmm. if they want in the middle of the day. And yeah. she's got some great art. And she's only been painting for like three years. Oh. She's an accountant. And she had a run in with cancer. <laughs> And it changed her life, and she's still an accountant. But she decided that she really wanted it, and now she has had two or three gallery showings, and wow. she sells nice. her paintings. That's and great. She uh, she told me right after the show was off the air that she actually is uh, really close to creating her own oracle deck. It's almost done, where she's doing her own art and stuff like this. So I know that the, they were planning on coming. So we want to have a kind of a, a real mixture. mixture. Mm. You know, we'll probably have somebody there selling stones, <coughs> you yeah. know, and, and other things. I do just want to say that Wubble Life Expo that I went to, well, everything I've went to with you guys was excellent. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Yes, yes. And the event planners, you guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for yeah. that. Oh, and very positive people. Can I, I'm just going to say oh, that. Okay. You guys are so positive. <laughs> And yeah. upbeat. I always feel great after I leave you, too. <laughs> so we, you know, um, so we've looked at a few other things. Um, so we're going to do performance art on one stage. We're going to do some acoustic. And then we're going to do some bands. We yeah. also have access to the community center. We haven't decided exactly what we're going to put in there, but we'll have some indoor stuff. Um, unfortunately, the woman that I wanted to bring that teaches all of the fun um, spiritual classes for kids, like shaka, sh uh, shopper shenanigans mm -hmm. and yeah. um, how to make yourself bullyproof and things like this. Fortunately, she's going to be in Virginia that weekend, oh, so sure. she's not going to be there. But we're—I know we've got some other people that are doing things. Um, now, is it are, are Angie and I still going to be in the parade? It's up to you guys. Well, yeah, yeah. it's up to you. So, yeah. are we going to are we going to we going to be in the parade, honey? You were our first event. Think about it. Let me know. I say we should be in the we parade. We should be in the parade. We should be in the parade. I think so. Um, so Angie and I will actually be there, which is, doesn't usually happen. But you know, Kathy will be overseeing things, and she's got a ton of volunteers. So Angie and I are actually going to be doing um, intuitive readings at that show. Oh, good. Yeah. You good. know, oftentimes when we get a show, we bring in other people, but it's going to be we're going to it's going to be Angie and I, and we're just going to bring in maybe good. a third person to do them. Good. To, you know, so have that yeah. as another offering to, to do there. That's good. So a lot of fun, different fun things going on. Um, what do fireworks cost these days? You must know because you raise all the money for them. I do. So Atlas is the fireworks company who actually does the Patriots, New England Patriots. And he does mm -hmm. Steve Wynn out in Las Vegas. So he's basically world renowned. Yeah. And um, for us, it's a $10,000 fee, but he only charges us 9500 and then he puts 500 towards our t-shirts or however so he nice. not only does and for ten thousand dollars it's an excellent show mm -hmm. i just had someone call me to see recommend them and i highly recommend them for anyone who's doing yeah. fireworks we've had him forever and he's great i deal with matthew shea from there but he's been with atlas since the beginning it's a mm -hmm. family run and he's friends and yeah yeah. It's an excellent show. That's a really And how can you show. say no to someone that does the yeah. New England Patriots? No. Yeah. No, no, Atlas puts on a really good show. Yep. So So this is going to be a very, uh, it's going to come in with a really good blast at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was going to yeah. say, we're talking yeah. about some impressive fireworks then. Yeah, they always have been. Yeah, yeah. he does a good job. Nice. And he, does, he did tell me that 18 minutes is the perfect fireworks show. Yes. Anything longer, people tend to get bored. Correct. Because people seem to think a half hour is best when in reality it's not. No. 18 minutes. Yeah. And he knows. So, yeah. I think he's always done a good show. And for $10,000, it's great. There you go. Yep. So if, if we come in and 
do Firefest and everything. And at the end of it, when everything is said and done, if we hand you a check for 10000 does that mean you just don't have to worry until... That, <laughs> that would go that would to next year. <laughs> that would go to next year. Yeah, you've been That's raising money all year. Yep. What are some of the other events you've been doing? We talked about we did Misty March Madness. Yep. So we've done... You did March, but you also did October. Mm -hmm. So upcoming is a motorcycle run. We were going to announce our Patriot of the Year. Well, I can't give out his name, but he is a veteran, and it's a good choice this year. Yeah. And we're also going to announce, this happens May 20th, our national anthem singer. She's a young lady from town. She's excellent. So on that day, she's going to sing the national anthem on July 1st. Following that, we have a June 17th kind of ribs and chili event with um, those two acoustic, acoustic guitarists that we had, Sean and Jeff. They're going to play, and Boston Cornhole is going to do a tournament and a rib and chili kind of food thing. Nice. That's June 17th, which kind of flows into another event the town is having, <laughs> Pepro Palooza. <laughs> so it's actually an all day of music. From, from there, we go to the VFW and we have Eastwood Peak, a local rock band who's going to rock it out as a kickoff to July 1st. So those are our two final events. Then throughout the year, we've had uh, children's Christmas party, another rock band event, your October, you know, mystical madness thing, and then the March thing. Then also launch in Nashua, let us fundraise there one night, you know. So it's been nice, a busy fundraising busy. year. It has been a busy. So you've, you, it sounds like you've run about eight different fundraising a events. A lot, yeah. Yeah. Now, are you ever eligible for grants or anything? So we did get a grant from the Mass Festivals, five hundred dollars that okay. just came through, and then there's a few other in town that I'm in the process of writing. So yeah, we did get one. Nice. Yeah. What other? You know, a lot of times people want to know the, the about nonprofits and like kind of where the money's go and stuff like that. So, what would you say? What would be your ideal budget if somebody was watching this and said? I just think that this is a fabulous and I have more money than I know what to do with and I want to write a single check that would give them a whole year to not have to worry. What would that check be? So for me, I always like to take as much as I can get because <laughs> then it goes. <laughs> Spoken like a true nonprofit. <laughs> so, so it just carries over. Yeah. Sorry. But the budget <laughs> to cover everything is 34000 But I really hate saying that because... I would gladly take a check for 40 or 50 and then, you know, yeah. we get more or whatever, but that's fine. Yeah. It's 34. And actually it's posted on our website where we are and what we need the money for. So everything's pretty transparent. Okay. So 10,000 for fireworks and then 24,000 for you. Where does the <laughs> The bands, the parade is actually a big chunk of the uh, budget. So yeah. There's a lot to cover when you do these events. And yeah. when we did Firefest, we had quite a lot to cover. So um, now there's no cost of this event. It's just an open event. Anyone can That's come. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. They have in the past collected like donations. Donations, yeah. Yeah, that day, which we've kind of been going back and forth because by that day, donating should be done. It should kind of be a day to just enjoy farm as far as the bucket going around that kind of thing well i think that you know one of the things uh, you know and here we are some people are like this is really interesting they're actually having the discussions about it and other people yeah. are like why, why we don't want to know about what goes on behind the scenes <laughs> <laughs> well you can turn the station off anyways um <laughs> the channel off so uh well i think that you know we're looking at how many vendors are we thinking that we're going to fill that field with? Maybe 75, 100 wow. to, to bring in? I mean, we, there's definitely the space there, depending on tents. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, and uh, I'm close. What? I'm close. I'm, you're close. <laughs> Who could say no to that? Look at that face. Who could say um, no to people her? People do. Um, <laughs> but um, bringing um, uh, but I definitely think instead of like, you know, like passing a no donation, which would be, you know, hey, 
I, I'd write on the bucket, hey, you know, you want to have a good time next year? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Start it now. But is definitely we should do some kind of raffle and have all of our vendors put in something so there's one big raffle. Mm -hmm. So I have an answer. So we do, we have been having a raffle for the Antigua trip. Um, ongoing, so that will be a draw that night too. Oh. Can put in more raffles there too. So every event that we've had, the Antigua trip's been there. You can buy raffles, put it in drawings on July 1st. Oh, nice. And it will be at the end of the day? Or before the fireworks, maybe. Just before the fireworks. Yep. So yep. people have all day to do that. Yep. So tell me about what this Antigua trip is. $2,400. Trip, you get to go to Antigua. I'm not sure if he is included, but you know, a raffle. And somebody's gets you donated this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. In a roundabout way. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story. There's a story there. I don't know if I want to ask the way. Well, she do you said. want to hear it? Sure. So in March, I won that trip because uh, little iguana oh, had little iguana had uh, <laughs> raffles there. So instead of taking the trip myself. We're using it to raise money for the Purple oh, Fourth. Nice. Now, see, it's one uh, nonprofit helping another. <laughs> yeah. I want, I, I want this to be recognized. I think this is fabulous that uh, you won a trip to Antigua for like a week. Is it for a week or something? Or actually, I don't know. The first don't thing I really how. thought of was we, me and my husband, we just reuse it. Yeah. Re raffle it and raise money for the fourth. From what I remember, it was a week or seven days. It might be seven days. Seven days, yeah. I believe. Six nights, yeah. seven days. And I've been called crazy for not using it, but that's okay. I, you know what? You can't have anybody that's, I mean, this is how dedicated this woman is to this <laughs> event, and she believes in it, and she puts her, she, she puts her trip where her mouth is. Yep. Um, now, would you, would you normally take a trip to Antigua? Is that a place that you would normally go? We may have done it. I mean, I can't say for sure, but I've never been, and, you know, after a long winter, who knows, we'd look at each other and go, <laughs> we're going. Yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That's it. Or I might have given it to one of my kids. My kids had said they'd take it. Yeah, no. But we're we're, we're raffling it off for <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how it went. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes your kids come and help you volunteer at these events. Because yes, I've I've yep. met well, yep. at least one, if not two, of your kids, yep. haven't I? Yeah. I guilt works good. <laughs> <laughs> we recently no. just uh, yeah, because you know we pre-tape shows, so this is this show is probably going to come out yeah, sometime in the beginning of June. <laughs> but we just did a Mother's Day. We just did a uh, on my Dragon show. We just did a mother a Mother's Day special um, about you know um, uh, uh, everything from good mothers to mean mothers. We covered. <laughs> so we didn't get into guilt mothers. You want to elaborate <laughs> well, they, on that? <laughs> that's what they say. I guilt them into yeah, doing. Yeah, you never things. had a guilt mother mother. Guilt <laughs> mothers are they're, really yeah. conniving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're good kids. They are. Yeah. They know they should help. It's a good cause. They benefit too. My grandkids will benefit. You know, it's something they can enjoy. Yeah. They should help. So, do your kids all still live in the general Pepperell area? Uh, one lives in Salem, uh, and my daughter lives down the street from me, and my other daughter lives in a little bondo on our yard that we've done over for various people. So she lives in my bondo right now. So two live around and one lives in Salem, Mass, which is close. They're which around. Is which is yep. close? Mm -hmm. Yep. So they're around. Will they all be there July 1st? You bet they will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How old are your grandkids? She's four. So Aww. you just have the one? Yep. 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 Okay. And does she does she live in Salem or is she close? She's close, and she said to my husband, "Hey, Nana talks about the Fourth of July an awful lot, so she's <laughs> listening." <laughs> well, you know, hey, get a couple more years. This one will be putting her granddaughter to work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, honey, it's the Fourth of July again. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm gonna get your face painted, and then you're gonna carry a little bucket around this. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Help me shut my Grammy up. <laughs> Donate. <laughs> She's a cutie. Uh, um, what words of wisdom or advice would you have 
to some of our people out there because, again, you know, it's the majority complain and the minority do something. Is, is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. You know? So mm -hmm. what words would you have to somebody out there in Hudson or Nashua or any of the channels across the country that carry us of um, how hard, well, and you didn't start it yourself, your mother mm -hmm. did and her friends, but how hard was it to start the nonprofit? How, how difficult was it to keep it going? Um, and what words of wisdom would you have for them if they had something in their town that was so important that they wanted to get behind? So you don't volunteer to say it's a lot of hard work. You volunteer because it's fun, you enjoy it, you want to see the outcome of your effort. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just say work hard, try and get people to come to your side, you know, a consensus, fundraise the best you can. But it is volunteer, so you can't really pressure people. People just donate when they can how they can, and that's really all you can expect and work from there. Just work hard and enjoy it. You work it. hard, but you have fun with it. Huh? You have fun with it. Yes. And that's what matters. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's got to be a cause people can get behind yep. and that they can have fun with. Yep. And you have to show them that it is a benefit to the community. It's a great day, family, friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you celebrate America. So you just keep pushing that message out there and Hopefully everyone's on board. And I, if anybody's listening today, again, if anybody's listening today and um, you don't have anything going on for July 1st and you'd like to come and help them out yep. with this cause, it doesn't matter that you're not in the town. Nope. Just come on down and, and enjoy, you know, connect with Kathy. Let her know that you're interested. It beats being at home by yourself. Um, I'm always, you, as people know me, I'm the advocate of nonprofits. I have my nonprofit show, Awakening Moments with Angie. And I'm always telling people, uh, if you tell me that you're bored and you're sitting at home, find, a, find something that intrigues you. And this is one that would be so much fun and yeah. it's a place to go and, and meet people and become a part of the community instead of complaining and saying I'm all by myself. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a great thing and really. Kathy. The thank you is having people there, whether you're part of the yeah. you know, town or not, just coming really shows us, you know, you appreciate our hard work, mm -hmm. our well, efforts. It was interesting because we had volunteers that helped at the Web of Light Expo. Mm -hmm. um, we actually had, had a couple of people, um, I don't even, I, I think I mentioned this to you, I'm not even sure because it was so hectic at the end of it. And, but I've got a couple of names and phone numbers of people who said, well, if you need any volunteers for your future one, I'd love to volunteer. I'd mm -hmm. love to help out. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I know that some of our volunteers have already committed to the fact they're going to come back to next year's. Yeah. And they're going to be there and they're yeah. going to help out and stuff like this. And it is, it is nice to be part of a community. Mm -hmm. um, how many volunteers will you probably have on the ground for Firefest? Do you have any idea? We've had some other people from other towns volunteer too, so they're coming. So off the top of my head, I, do, I don't really know right now. Okay. Yeah, because probably... I'm not worried about it. Yeah. People tell me I should be, but I'm not. No. Probably a few days before then, we should probably try to get together with all the volunteers and just, you know, Angie and I should be there for that. And okay. And kind of, like, you know, mm -hmm. talk about it. But again, and I love this idea. If you're in the local area, whether it's Pepperell or Tingsboro or Nashua or Hudson or whatever, if you're somebody who loves, grew up with, you know, I always think of, you know, Saturday in the Park, the old, uh, mm. yeah, the old song, you know, it must have been the Fourth of July. <laughs> People love Chicago. I was trying to remember the name of the yep. band that did it. Um, but if you go, hey, and I'm going to put this out there. Because I hear this in my practice, I've heard this in my practice for ages, and as I'm sure Angie has, that people come to us and they go, you know, I, I, I really would like to meet somebody, I'd like to settle, you know, I'd like to have somebody come into my life, I've been single for a while, mm -hmm. blah, 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 and I'll go, go find things that you're interested in and donate your time, volunteer, yeah. meet new people. So if you're sitting around going, you know, 
Fourth of July fireworks and music are some of my loves, and I, I love the, the whole family and the whole patriotic thing. You come in, you volunteer, and you get to meet a lot of interesting people and you, stuff like this. And maybe the, the, the guy or the girl of your dreams is right there. Exactly. And you're not going to find them by mm -hmm. watching it on TV. Yeah. yeah. I say that to people all the time. Yeah. Help out at a boys' club or a girls' club or, you know, just get out there. But it's come true. to the Pepperell Fourth of July first. Mm -hmm. to help. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's true because when we were at, uh, I, you're not aware of this, but at our expo even, there was one of our volunteers who actually came out and was volunteering and connected to someone who actually offered them a position. And now they are employed. Yeah. And they found that because they were volunteering and somebody liked the way they were handling things and they were approached. Oh, you'll have to tell me more about so, that afterwards. You know, it's something that She's keeping secrets it's interesting again. interesting to see that, but it's, that's what happens. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the committee actually has grown this year. We have a lot of people on the committee, friends that help outside. But when we have a meeting, there's a lot of people, you know, there's probably 10 people there sometimes which is more than has been there in the past. So, yeah, we meet every Monday, second Monday of the month, BFW and Pepperell, 7 o'clock, everyone's welcome. We welcome everyone. Any ideas, any new thoughts, welcome. And the other thing is, you know, there's this whole, uh, and you, you've heard it in a number of different ways, you know, that uh, if you want to see, you know, look at the five people that you hang out with, to see how financially successful you're going to be or all these other things. It's, it's played out in a lot of different ways that people have taught or shared or expressed. But if you're somebody who is willing to go out and volunteer and have fun and be solution oriented or just, you know, be the smile when it's a little frustrating or stuff like that, you are likely to be meeting somebody that is the same way. You're meeting somebody who feels a commitment to community. You feel somebody who is willing to, to live their values. You're looking at somebody who it, it, you know, wants to go out and wants to have fun. Because how often does somebody end up with dating somebody, a friend, and they're talking to you going, yeah, you know, I was fixed up. I met him on a dating site or is fixed up or whatever and you know they're a really nice guy they're a really nice gal but you know after two or three months they never want to go anywhere and they never want to do anything and they don't understand you meet somebody at something that you have a mutual there you're already one step ahead mm -hmm. and there are some single people on the committee wow. yes there are of both genders uh, I don't know about both genders female oh, okay okay Yep. Not that it makes any difference. No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So, you know, it I'm just doesn't. putting it out there. Um, to date, what has been your single largest fundraising event that you remember, that you know of? I think you're tied. The October one, and we actually just did a comedy one, tied. Okay. Over a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred or so. Okay. Yep. So, are you ready, Angie? Because we're going to beat that, right? Oh, th most definitely. Yep. And then this third event. was March. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this this woman, this way. I, I will never forget when she came and I handed because I was the one that wrote the check and I handed her the check for what she made. For, and she's like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> really? <laughs> you were so excited. Yep, I yep. was. Well, I, I, I am going gonna, gonna to put, put a little bit of my reputation on the line here. And I'm going to say that we will, we will walk out of this as, as your number one fundraising function. Right? Without a doubt. Yep. Without and I a have doubt. confidence in that's the truth. Yep. So good. I, yep. doubt and fire yep. fist. I have no doubt. Yep. Because so I think our vision is the same. Yep. Madness. <laughs> <laughs>
but <laughs> fun. <laughs> I like that. Our vision is the same. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been... I'm the calm one. I, I know. I'm the conservative been, one in this room. You're the calm one, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely the calm one. So you have to walk with the three stages. You're going to have fun with that. Uh, uh, what, 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 what fun am I going to have with the three stages? What am I doing? We do have... Coordinating three stages. Yeah. Well, which is fun. why I want to talk to the artist. It's yeah, we've got to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I'm. I. I, I want, I'm all ready to. As soon as you start putting people in slots, I'm all ready to criticize you. So I'm. I'm. I'm on it. <laughs> we do have a band coming with their own setup, though. Daddios is marching in the band. He wanted to stay on the field too, but he has his own thing, his own setup. Yeah, because all the bands that are going to be doing. I mean, acoustic does not need. The, the does it need. Uh, amps or anything no they bring their own they bring their own so, yeah. but when any of the bands that come i talked to a band the other day that actually it's so interesting because again it, there's this uber creative thing which is one of the reasons why i love my dragon show is i love the uber creatives um but i talked to i um, mean she was supposed to email me and she hasn't yet uh but uh i talked to a band that's thinking of coming down out of portland maine oh. Um, and they want to come down, and they're trying to make the arrangements. But besides being in the band, he is also a spiritual artist that sells his stuff. So he wants to do, so he wants to, so I talked to them and said, you know, you can get a booth and have somebody selling your spiritual art, and then you can be there playing the band as well and, you know, yeah, selling well, your CDs. Oh, yeah, because when they do the band piece of it, it's only going to be so much time of, of value to each of the bands. So Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of sort of... Both. I'm kind of sort of thinking that each band, you know, a, a normal set goes about 45 minutes. So if you had 45 minutes and then 15 minutes where they're selling mm -hmm. their CDs and breaking down, and then the other band's yep. setting up for 15 minutes, that gives each 45 minutes of playing, a half an hour to sell their stuff until the next band starts... I, that's what I'm thinking. Obviously, I'm, I'm open, and we're in creation mode here. Mm -hmm. um, and if a band says, hey, I'm going to be hanging out all day, they may play more than once, actually, depending on what we have for scheduling. Yeah, probably the bands would play more than a little longer. Three times fast that they would play, you know, as long as we needed. Yeah. And uh, the other two are probably two-hour. They like to play in two-hour things. Two-hour things? Sean and Jeff. Those are both the acoustics? Yep. Yeah. So we're going to talk to about all of that because, again, it's going to depend on, on we've got three stages, but we're going to have a variety of things, and we have basically eight hours. Mm. So you still have to look at eight mm -hmm. hours, and, we want, and people want to have some kind of variety. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's interesting. Okay. Well, Kathy, share your favorite story. And then we're going to be wrapping up with you and then wrapping up the show. Cher, what is your favorite story that's happened at a fundraising event? Hmm. Hmm. I don't really have one. You caught me off guard. I caught you off guard? Yeah. Can somebody mark the calendar, please? Yeah. Yeah, that is strange. Yeah, like nothing that went you know, looked like it was going terribly sideways and straightened itself out or wasn't at all what you expected or you were scrambling around? For me, the best story is when I break even or make a profit. That's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. they've all been that way, so I'm okay. <laughs> That's good. Kathy Lundin, she uh, is currently... Uh, you're the head of the board? The president, she which is, I don't like saying very much, but that's it, president. She, she is currently the president of Small Town Big Bang, uh, which raises the money every year for the 4th of July fireworks in Pepperell, Mass. Uh, she has, uh, this organization has been around for 30 years, almost 30 years, started by actually her mother and some friends that decided that uh, they wanted Pepperell to be more patriotic and the community comes together and uh, works as a community. Mm -hmm. 
thanks for coming on. No, thanks for having me Thank you. very much. I much appreciate it. And so doesn't the committee and the community. Good. Thank you. Good. So uh, coming up uh, at the, that's January, uh, July 1st at Pepple Mass, we're going to have in, uh, as starting at the end of May, we're going to be doing our mastery mentorship application interview process. Angie and I, in January of 2018, are going to start an 18-month program. Uh, it's going to work with people who want to build themselves as spiritual professionals, light workers, and spiritual entrepreneurs. It's both to help people build their business as well as their spiritual path and skill sets. Uh, we're going to be running through the summer a set of application interviews for people that are interested. We'll only be taking eight people into this mastership program. The first one is May 30th. The second one is June 27th and then July 25th. Uh, also, we have coming up in June. Next slide, please. June 6th, we have a peak at numerology, 7 to 9. Uh, we have a full moon drumming circle, July 9th. Uh, and on the 13th, we have the Empath Monthly Support Group with Angie. Uh, and on June 14th, Discovering and Living Your Soul's Path with none other than Dr. Kevin. Mm -hmm. And on the 16th, we have a Reiki Share with Reiki Master Jeff Beeland, uh, Intuitive Practice Group with Angie, and we have our second Journey to Health series with Marion Killenbeck. If you haven't seen the Marion Killenbeck uh, show yet, Please come to our YouTube channel and look at it if you missed it while it was on TV. Uh, and we're going to wrap up. We're out of time. Um, you know, community is what you make it. And your community will support you as much as you support it. Oftentimes, people are amazed at how much the community will come together and support stuff. Uh, and then if they stop back and they think and realize it, somewhere along the way, they were probably supporting the community. If you have not been supporting your community, now's a good time to start. Namaste.